Okay, you know, uh, we were talking about a project in Gahanna one time, <clears throat> and uh, the city engineer uh, said, well, <clears throat> when we complete it, we'll, uh, it'll be a sea level uh, traffic movement in this uh, major intersection. And uh, we kind of looked at each other and thought, we're going to spend millions of dollars and we're only going to come up with a sea level. What can we do to, to boost that and do a better job of managing that traffic? Um, the engineer thought about it and uh, came back and said, you know, if we bought out the curb cuts on this corner lot, <clears throat> we'd, get, we'd get up to virtually an A. Uh, so we said, well, let's, let's do that. It's going to be expensive, but I think we ended up spending about a quarter million dollars to buy two curb cuts uh, from a gas station. <clears throat> uh, uh, it was good for the intersection. It uh, wasn't so good for the local business. Uh, it was a, the, the company, of course, required the, the major company, uh, received the quarter million dollars, the little local guy that rented the station <clears throat> didn't get that, but he lost the two curb cuts and it wasn't an ideal solution. Uh, I, I think it really makes sense to look for opportunities to uh, avoid uh, headaches and to kill a whole lot of birds with one stone. And often when we're looking at like an intersection improvement, um, uh, you have so many constraints that you think just that one, another quarter million dollars, you know, gee, is it really worth it? And, uh, and a variety of uh, examples uh, over the years uh, indicated it, it was. Of course, beauty is an important thing. And we're here to talk about beautiful Ohio <clears throat> uh, and scenic Ohio and tree planting. Uh, this is a, uh, Gehanna, uh, its road structure was built in the early parts of the, uh, of the 20th century. Uh, and then in the, in the last half of the 20th century, we did a whole bunch of growing and everything had to be rebuilt. And, and so we had wonderful opportunities in rebuilding to do more than just focus uh, on the road and improve the beauty, but also lots of other functions. Uh, on, on this project, uh, an intersection of Stigler Road, the Stigler Road rebuild, uh, it's a corner. And we looked at that and we thought, and, and, there's a, and, and on the other side of the street, there's a uh, a, a, a rapidly uh, declining uh, zigzag ravine and rebuilding this uh, country road with uh, uh, swales into a, a, a modern road with a uh, storm sewer. We were going to dump a lot of water in that ravine. So we thought, well, you know, let's build uh, a detention basin. If we're going to build a detention basin, then we thought, why not build it at the corner? Uh, because, uh, you know, site triangle is so important. We often talk about uh, minimum site triangles. Uh, but more than minimums better in site triangles. It improves the safety of an intersection. Uh, another thing that uh, uh, I know our engineers always uh, hated were curb cuts because at every curb cut uh, you have uh, uh, additional uh, uh, turbulence which creates accidents. Another problem is curb cuts too close to a corner. So by, by just, a, this was a, a vacant lot, was never gonna be much, maybe a beer drive through, <clears throat> which wouldn't have added to the aesthetics of the neighborhood, uh, but we were able to acquire it and, uh, and uh, turn it into a, a simple de detention basin. This is just a, a back flushing detention basin. The water flows in, fills it up, and then flows back out the same pipe as the water goes down. So it does retard the storm water and it fulfills its function as a stormwater detention basin. It provides open space for the community and beautiful trees, but it also improves the safety of that intersection dramatically by providing more than a, much more than a minimum site triangle and eliminating any need for curb cuts at that intersect, that busy intersection ever. Um, so, uh, acquiring a little more land, we were just talking about uh, the wonderful uh, berms that uh, uh, are such reasonable sound barriers compared to the concrete walls, which require so much uh, uh, maintenance. Uh, uh, like we had a suicide on ours in Gehanna one time, one of the first sound barriers, and somebody just decided to run their car into it and smash. Fortunately, it was built well enough that it didn't, didn't hurt the sound barrier at all, but uh, it did work for the gentleman that wanted to commit suicide. Uh, so a little more land is a wonderful thing. When we were rebuilding this intersection <clears throat> at Hamilton East, Johnstown in Gahanna, there had been an old gas station there. <clears throat> um, as we were doing this, we talked to, of course, to adjacent landowners and a, and a bank said, you know, we would like to acquire um, a couple parcels there and build a bank, but 
we don't want that gas station. That's a liability. Um, if we bought that, could we donate it to the city? And we said, wow, that'd be great. We'd love to have you do that. And I don't know whether how many of you have worked on cleaning up old gas station sites, but Buster is a wonderful organization, the Bureau of Underground Storage Tank, uh, whatever. <clears throat> and uh, uh, they're, they're, you know, they care about the environment. They're, they're there to clean it up and help and be sure that you clean it up, but they do it so reasonably and efficiently um, they're just great to work with. I've, I've had to work with the EPA on other issues. Absolutely the opposite. I mean, they're, they're there to help you not to just throw, you know, we had a, a big landfill uh, that was, hadn't been closed for decades and was just belching green chemicals uh, on a daily basis. And <clears throat> under three different governors, I wrote to uh, the EPA and said, we'd like to acquire that as a city. But city council rightfully is worried that you'll sue us if we acquire it, even though there's nobody to sue now and you haven't done anything for 25 years. Um, would you just work with us on this? Just give us some some indication that you won't immediately sue us and, and, and tell us we're bad guys for owning it. And I got, <clears throat> and with three different governors from two different uh, political parties, I got the same answer back from the same bureaucrat that said, if you acquire it, we will sue you immediately. Uh, finally, uh, it, it got worked out after about 25 years, but <clears throat> what, what a miserable kind of thing. So at any rate, gas station sites are easy to clean up. Uh, uh, great, great organization, Buster, to work with. This one, we, uh, the, 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 this is an X, X intersection. Could, we couldn't straighten it out uh, into a 90 degree angle, but uh, acquiring that whole gas station site was wonderful. And then we leased it back to the bank for uh, landscaping and sign purposes. So they, they do all the maintenance on it, they take care of it, and we have a whole bunch of extra right of way for future improvements if we need it, uh, and, and with no liabilities to the city other than the, the cleanup, which was uh, very easy. Uh, this was an, an awkward site uh, 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 along the freeway at Hamilton Road and I-270. Um, <clears throat> this was kind of a, a leftover parcel, uh, and when the uh, state acquired it, um, the owner quickly put a, a sanitary sewer into it uh, to improve its value. Never intended to develop it. In fact, the sewer's there today. There's never been a hookup to it. It's just an abandoned new sewer. Um, but it would have been cheaper just to buy that out. Today, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a beautifully wooded uh, um, uh, buffer. Uh, to, to our city at the freeway and give and, and sort of a, a sound a, a wooded sound wall so it's not very wide but it's wide enough that there's enough timber in there that we do get the effect of a, of a sound wall and it has a, a, a real positive uh, uh, impact on, on that major intersection that's the Galloway tract uh, <clears throat> at US uh, 62 and Stigler um, ODOT actually acquired extra right-of-way, and that's this parcel you see in front of McDonald's here. Um, and then it's, it was the city's responsibility to maintain it. Uh, well, when uh, McDonald's came along, first of all, we've improved that intersection a couple of times uh, over the last couple decades. It's constantly needing uh, additional work, and we have extra right-of-way right, right there to do that. So it's a wonderful, uh, it was a wonderful ac acquisition at the time, maybe in the 1950s when, when it was first acquired. Um, but uh, McDonald's said, uh, say, would you, when they were coming in, uh, would you mind if we maintained that? And we said, that would be great. So we uh, gave them a little, a little uh, s a statement from me as mayor saying, uh, to the extent of my authority, I give you full, you know, I delegate all of it to you to maintain it in a way you'd like. So they, they mow it, they landscaped it beautifully, they put in little picnic tables, um, and uh, there's again, no cost to us, an improvement at a major intersection where we've got you know, no, no curb cuts coming off of that, that, uh, triang uh, that site triangle area, no close curb cuts to the intersection. By the way, there's an Agler Road right back here, so it's a double light within a stone's throw of each other. Uh, and that little extra right of way just has really Im improved. So you know, whoever, engineered that originally and, and put in and acquired that extra right away did a, did a great favor to all of us uh, as road builders and uh, 
road maintainers down through the, the, the following decades. As we rebuild Taylor Road and the residential the Taylor Road, which is a collector uh, and uh, the Helmbright there, um, we also had stormwater problems, <clears throat> which is usual because we didn't we didn't deal with stormwater problems uh, uh, in prior generations. Uh, so we acquired this corner parcel, which allowed us to build a long linear detention basin and intercept uh, a lot of water coming off that, which was flooding the downstream structures. But again, as a highway project, <clears throat> it allowed us to uh, uh, have, uh, again, a large site triangle. And, a, and a, this is an industrial divider. Industries, uh, industry is south, residential north. Uh, and so we got a lot of heavy truck traffic on that highway intersecting at Helmbright with a lot of residential traffic. So having that extra site triangle, no curb cuts, uh, dramatically improved the safety of the uh, uh, of the intersection as it would have if we'd have just left it for private development. Uh, and it also, um, it just recently, improving the sewer down through this area, uh, the city uh, put a, a pump station, uh, since it was our property, and we had a little berm, high berm area where uh, a pump station prefab could be brought in, set right down, <clears throat> and hooked in. So having that extra land allowed us uh, that option of quickly solving a, a, a need for a pump station. And it's still a wooded corridor, uh, a wooded area within the residential area with the beautiful trees um, and uh, again, solved the, flood, solved the flooding problems downstream. The corner lots are just, uh, as we've talked about so far, are a wonderful thing to add to a highway system. Uh, this one is actually just a floodplain. <clears throat> we talk about stormwater detention, uh, and uh, probably the most natural <clears throat> uh, stormwater detention is floodplain. As we were rebuilding Granville Street, uh, <clears throat> we talked to <clears throat> about this parcel. Again, from an engineering standpoint, being a problem because the engineers did not want curb cuts close to that bridge. And yet there's not a lot of room and that is was zoned for commercial and so it would have been some kind of commercial property with some kind of battle to to, to fill the floodplain at least enough to build the, <clears throat> the, the whatever uh, site there and then a battle over the curb cuts uh, it was much cheaper just to acquire that parcel which uh, which does a number of things for us one it eliminates the the problem of people wanting curb cuts close to the bridge uh, secondly it uh, it provides us uh, excellent access to that bridge for maintenance and inspection purposes because the other three uh, corners are, are heavily developed. Um, of course, it provides beautiful, uh, uh, beautiful open space. Um, also, uh, stormwater storage. It floods every time there's a, 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 a big flood on Rocky Fork. And it's, it has uh, other potential. That's a library right here, the Gehanna Library. So should it be needed, it's a potential uh, place for overflow uh, parking uh, for, the, uh, for the library and, uh, and just has so many multiple purposes, uh, <clears throat> which had we built Granville Street and ignored the engineer's concern about curb cuts, we'd have lost all the beauty and all the utility uh, and degraded the safety of, of, of the new street uh, if we hadn't acquired that. So the engineer's needs in each of these cases we've been talking about uh, have, uh, uh, have blossomed into solving a lot of other problems along with them. This was an odd little parcel on Agler Road in Gehanna. Uh, at one time, you might have put a photo mat on it, I suppose. It's, uh, you couldn't build much else on it. And as we were rebuilding this intersection, <clears throat> a major crosswalk here from a pretty densely developed neighborhood to uh, the side that I'm on of this inter uh, intersection uh, is a shopping center. And so there was a lot of traffic, uh, a lot of uh, uh, young uh, people crossing at this uh, crosswalk as we were rebuilding this uh, Agler Road into a, uh, a, a, as part of a major intersection that's further, further east. Uh, and again, um, no place where we wanted curb cuts, a place where we really uh, uh, could use uh, extra site triangle uh, view, uh, and, 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 and in a large neighborhood where there were no parks, a uh, neighborhood built in the early 60s uh, uh, before parks were part of what we were doing. Uh, so we acquired that. Uh, actually, we 
started researching it and found out it had been in, in, in test state for 17 years. Uh, an attorney uh, had bought it, one of those guys that buys little odd parcels in the hopes that someday the state will need it or the city and, and then they'll make a lot of money. <clears throat> but he had been dead 17 years and it never just, it just languished there. Didn't have any relatives apparently. So we were able to buy it. We were able to push it into a sheriff's sale and buy it. And, uh, and that eliminated curb cuts, gave us a side triangle, uh, uh, improved the safety of that intersection uh, uh, reduced the turbulence that uh, would have naturally occurred at that intersection if it had developed, and the neighborhood fell in love with it. Uh, this, they, they formed an organization and took over maintenance and and the built and there's flower beds all throughout it. And and uh, the first season they harassed me to death because our <clears throat> our mowers would blow grass onto their flowers as they drove by. And they said, can't they blow it the other way? Well, yeah, except you got different guys mowing and they're seasonal guys, they're college students or high school, you know. It's, so finally I said, what, what, if, what if we gave you a grant to mow it? And they said, well, yeah, we could do that. So for like, I don't know, 300 bucks for the summer, we gave them 300 bucks and they hired their kids or whoever it was that mowed it. Uh, and, then, and then their conflict was interfamily, not with us. <clears throat> so again, uh, one that, uh, for a couple hundred bucks a year, we, we don't have to worry about mowing it or for anything. And they and they plant it with gorgeous plants. And they came back one day and said, hey, we'd really like a little gazebo there. And we looked at it and thought, man, we could build that. So, but again, the primary purpose of it is to make that intersection and that crosswalk safer. So this all blossomed out of uh, the need of engineers to, to, do, to, do, to put forth their best, best work. This was another gas station site uh, at a, an intersection that's not a 90 degree angle. So again, a more difficult in, intersection from a, a traffic management standpoint. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, we talked to the, to the company and uh, yeah, it was an old gas station and, the, and not enough room to do any kind of significant modernization. We appraised it for its land value at one value. They came back and said, well, that's fair, except here's another appraisal at its, biz, its actual cash flow value. And uh, our, uh, our, our appraisers said, yeah, that's a fair uh, uh, way to do it. So we acquired from the company, cleaned it up through Buster. And now we have, uh, again, no curb cuts where there were like four curb cuts before at an odd X intersection. Uh, and the collector, this is uh, again, a major collector uh, on Fort Gahanna, uh, Route 62. Um, and, uh, and then Eagle Scouts uh, volunteered to plant it as an Eagle Scout uh, project. Uh, in fact, I don't think they took them up on it because after I left and I was big on privatization, the, the new administration isn't so much, but the neighbor on this side said, why don't you just uh, lease that to, you know, uh, allow me to maintain it. I'll maintain it. I, thought, I don't know why you wouldn't, but uh, yeah. So there's often people who just would rather, it because it's sort of, it affects their property value. He was glad to pick up the litter and mow it. Uh, the city didn't take him up on it, but uh, I sure would have had I been there. Uh, the, so the, the, the idea of, of this presentation is that, you know, often, as always, we have to look at dollars. Dollars control everything. That's our first uh, uh, limiting factor on any project. Uh, but, uh, to, to invest millions of dollars in a rebuild and then end up with a sea level intersection at the end of it. Uh, uh, end up with an intersection that the engineers tell us this won't do as good a job as we could do at this intersection. What a disappointment and, uh, and, and how discouraging to everybody involved to uh, work their heart out and end up with an intersection that's not, not what it could be in terms of traffic safety, traffic movement. Uh, but by listening to the engineers and, uh, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and, and, and thinking about things like traffic turbulence and getting those curb cuts away from the intersection and maximizing uh, the uh, uh, site triangle uh, distance uh, uh, and providing ourselves uh, uh, future access uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and landing zones for, con for construction material. Um, We've, uh, we've improved the beauty of Gehanna dramatically, improved the, uh, uh, done a, a tremendous amount of planting and preservation of uh, open space and uh, forest. Um, and, 
and the city is so much better off and so much greener as a result of listening to engineers uh, and adhering to, uh, to their, their recommendations on, on uh, making that the best intersection that it can be. Uh, and, uh, and I think uh, um, that's an important aspect that we need to, to help uh, politicians like myself understand that uh, uh, you might save a couple of bucks today, but you'll cost yourself a fortune in the next couple of decades. Uh, and how many accidents will occur? How many people will be hurt? How much property damage will occur? Uh, and you degrade the city environmentally in the process. Uh, and uh, of course, we achieve other things like stormwater detention. So uh, we thank you for uh, always uh, pushing us uh, to build the best intersection possible because uh, that, that turns out to be environmentally uh, the best thing to do also.